We're in the midst of a wonderful series. It's been a six-week series that's ongoing with the understanding unfolding about who we are. What kind of place is this? What's our purpose? What's our mission? We share that every Sunday morning as we open the service and we say, welcome to City of Light. This is a place where? A place where what? What goes on? Who? How? When? Where? And why? Well, we're answering all those questions as we define each one of those statements that we share in that opening or defining statement as we begin our worship together. This Sunday, we're focusing on that phrase that says, we know that how we act is the greatest expression of what we believe. This is a place where we know, we understand, we get it, that how we act is the greatest expression of what we believe. I want to tell you this. Every one of you are a preacher. That's right. Look at you. Call yourself the reverend because every one of you are a preacher in your own way and in your own right. There was a pastor who was inviting young people to join ministry and to be a light and to be a witness and saying, oh, wouldn't you like to be a preacher? And he's inviting everybody with such enthusiasm and energy and saying, you know what? You need to join the army of the Lord. And one young man jumped up and said, pastor, I'm already in the army of the Lord. And the pastor looked a little confused and said, well, how come I don't see you except Christmas and Easter? He said, well, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> now, all of us are ministers in our own way because our life is a great sermon. Our life speaks volumes. Our life teaches the world that which we truly believe. How we live, how we act, what we say, what we think, what we do is the greatest expression of our beliefs, that which we hold dear within our own hearts and our lives. So we see that life is a great message. It speaks in great volumes to us. Yet today in our world, we find many people who have speak one way and do another. We find a world of great hypocrisy. And unfortunately, because of that, many people are saying, ah, I'm not cut out for church. I'm not into this. I don't really believe it. I don't really find that this is a place for me because what I see is a lot of hypocrisy. People saying, I love this or I do this or I believe this, but I don't do that and I don't love this and I don't believe that. You see, there's that conflict that says, they may say, we operate in love. We share love with one another. And yet there's so much division and decision about Who's included and who's not? Who's welcome for communion? Who's not? Who's welcome to come to church? And who's invited to be part of the family of God or the great community? We find that there's that kind of hypocrisy, but yet one of the beautiful things about the hypocrisy that we're seeing is, well, it shines a great light on true intention. It speaks volumes. Whereas someone says, this is what I believe, but I don't really do it, act it out or express it, then that hypocrisy shows with a bright light. I guess you don't really believe it. I guess it's not really one of the values that you hold dear to your heart and your life. So as we live in this world, we find that hypocrisy is constantly reflecting back to us. What's the true intention of those who are around us who say, I believe in this, I profess this, I want this, I teach this, I demonstrate this in my heart and life, and yet they don't really hold it dear to their hearts and lives because we don't see the fruit, even though they may speak of it. We don't see the evidence of the expressions. You see, our action is the expression of our belief. And every belief wants to be expressed. Every belief that you hold dear wants to be revealed, wants to be put into action. You see, every belief is like this wonderful vibrational living that we experience in our life. Your life, your thoughts, your essence is full of vibration. It's vibrating right now. It's sending out frequencies. Science tells us that, yes, we could demonstrate the vibrational level as we come near the body. We could feel the vibrations, not only of the breathing process, but the energy that comes out of every body. How many of you ever felt someone come near to you and you felt their energy field, their vibrational field around you? You've experienced it, so you know this to be true, that your vibration is your personal energy or your personal frequency. It's the culmination of every thought and every action you've ever performed. It creates this vibration. 
For some, there's a high vibration of love. And that vibrating at this high frequency sends out wonderful uh, essence that we interact with and we're drawn to that love that's coming and expressed from one another. Some others, there's a vibrational level that's lower frequency, that of fear, worry, stress, and that vibrates at a much lower level. And so we kind of feel like, well, wait a minute, we don't want to be near that. We're not drawn to it as much as we may feel the vibration of love within us. So it is, your vibration is your divine signature. It's your soul essence. It's That's what's really special to you. And as you express your beliefs, there's this vibration that goes out from you. You say, I believe in the power of love. Woo! Well, you know what? As you express that, that love radiates from you and touches one another. And it, it, we all experience that power in a divine way. For your vibration is a direction of those inner thoughts, feelings, beliefs, choice of words. And the higher vibration that you hold in your life, uh, the faster there is, they say, it, there are light particles radiating from you, energy particles radiating from you, coming from you. The higher then that your vibration is, then there's a higher level of consciousness or awareness of understanding that we move high up into this wonderful heavenly realm of comprehending the goodness of God and how God might be demonstrated through our lives. Now, there has to be a match. There has to be a connection between that which you believe and that which you act out or express or do. If there's not a connection, well, there's not a great vibrational level going on. We're not receiving. We're not connecting to it. Though we may profess, I'm all about love, uh, not for you or not for you or not for those people or for that race or that community or that religion or that group of people. We may talk all this goodness of love, but oh my Lord, and then we post on Facebook something that's so hateful about someone who is not like us. Then we look and say, well, wait a minute, what's our belief? Do you really believe it? Because what you're expressing doesn't align. There's not a match. There's not a connection there. And too often in our world today, people are looking to say, I want to see someone who believes something and they live it. They express it. They show it. For this is a place. This is a place where we know and we understand that the greatest expression of what we believe is how we live on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's our operation. That's our calling. So it be that we check, it is that we check our actions every day to say, is there alignment? Is there a match? Do we have this connection here that the energy and the vibrational level of our believing, our thoughts, our actions would radiate from this place in a dynamic way that would touch the world? Now, we've chosen the name City of Light. A lot of people confused. Wait a minute, City of Light? Are you selling light bulbs here? One man stopped by and inquired, wanted to know if this was a light bulb store. And I said, no. City of Light, you've given me the wonderful opportunity to explain. You see, we've had a vision here of being a community that comes together. We thought the best way to describe this metropolitan community that we founded would be to describe it as a city. For a city has all kinds of activities coming, coming and going, all kinds of exchange, cultural ideas, education, and commerce, all going on in a sense that there's this wonderful exchange of community coming together. We see ourselves as a city, a hub of this wonderful light. Not the light bulb, oh, but the light of enlightenment. Light is truth. Light is understanding. Light is God. Oh, we love it when we have these wonderful aha light experiences when the darkness dissipates and all of a sudden all we see is the wonderful understanding, the truth, the light of God revealed. That's what we've chosen as a name, to be a city, a hub, a connection, a community full of light that demonstrates and shines brightly, that operates in this higher vibrational mode or higher vibrational frequency. I have to say that one of the nice things that people often say as they walk into this building is, I love the energy here. I love the energy here. Like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, I'm glad that you're sensitive and you're wearing it, that you're feeling this energy of love, peace, joy, connection, 
spiritual desire for growth and development and enlightenment. I love that you're engaging in that and you're feeling a vibrational level that matches what we believe and how we act. That's what creates this wonderful demonstration. For the energy of believing is truly strong when there is a conviction about it. A conviction. How many of you know what a conviction is? We kind of toss that word out quite often. Sometimes we don't quite get it. A conviction, uh, you know, not a convention, but a conviction. We're getting it clear here that what we're talking about is something that's a strong and a firm belief that grabs onto us. I love this illustration. I've shared it many times, but I think it's worth really uh, breaking down and talking about once again that describes what a conviction really is. Now, there was a farm, and the farm was welcoming the pastor to come in for a visit, and all the farm animals got together and said, we need to do something special. We need to create a wonderful feast to celebrate the pastor coming to the farm. All the farm animals began to get together and said, well, what, 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 what can we do? What do you think? What, what, what can we offer? Let's create a feast. What will it be? Oh, the chicken said, I'll offer some eggs. Oh, eggs. There we go. Cow says, I'll offer some milk. Eggs, milk, wonderful. Scrambled eggs, uh, milk. Okay, uh, we, we're going. we got a great breakfast menu. What we need is some um, meat as they look to the pig. And the pig says, I'll give bacon. But I want you to know one thing. For the chicken to give eggs is nothing. For the milk, cow to give milk is nothing. But for me to give bacon is to give my all. That's conviction. A conviction that's a firm held belief that says, I give my all, I surrender my all to it. When we have these kind of convictions within our lives, it's a life-changing trans or transformational experience that goes on within us. When we say, this is what I believe, and I have this as a conviction, it then has a force of strength to shape our actions in a new way. Oh, but if it's not truly a conviction, and it's one of those nice things you say, I'd like to believe this. I think I believe this. I kind of believe this. That's not a conviction. And the energy, the vibrational energy then is gone out. It filters out from that, and it doesn't manifest in demonstration within our hearts and our lives. Because then we're so easily swayed and we give up on, wait a minute, I had a belief that all things work together for good, except today. You see, it dissipates. It lost its energy. It lost its high vibrational frequency because there's not a conviction that says, even today, even in the midst, even in the midst of a challenge, even in the midst of our darkest moment, all things work together for good. It didn't say some days. It didn't say Tuesdays only. It didn't say the fourth Sunday of every month it works together for good. It says all things work together for good at all times. We say God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Is that a belief? And is there a conviction around that? If there is, then it shapes our actions. And we express life so differently when this happens. We read in the book of Daniel, the beautiful story of Daniel's great conviction. He, as a young man, as a leader in the government of that time, he had a strong belief in the power of prayer. He would go to his room and he would open the windows, the scriptures describes in a metaphorical way, opening the windows of his life to this wonderful moment of prayer and communion and connection. He did it in the morning. He did it in the afternoon. He did it in the evening. Three times a day, this was his conviction. Now his enemies sought to the king and think, went to the king and sought out a way to just try to harm or bring um, adversarial conditions to Daniel. And so they went to the king and appealing to his ego said, King, how about this? I got a great idea. How about we just honor you for the next 30 days and no one prays unto anyone else but to you and gives glory to you? Oh, the king says, not a bad idea. I kind of like that. I'll make that a, de a decree. He makes it into law. The law of the Medes and the Persians, which could not be changed for any reason whatsoever, stamped and sealed. And suddenly Daniel, who lives by his conviction, is found praying, praying to God, someone other than the king, 
and the people of the community and the government rally around to bring Daniel in and there's charges and the king loved Daniel and oh no, who could have, how could this happen to my good friend Daniel? This can't be. It's not possible that this would unfold in this way. Oh, what have I done? I've made this decree. I've made, put this law into action and now oh, my good friend Daniel is going to be punished. And what was the punishment? To be lowered into the lion's den. On the day when Daniel's brought forth, lowered into that lion's den, that conviction paid off. That conviction that says, this is what I believe, and it's going to match my actions. For if he believed that God is with him, and that God never leaves him nor forsakes him, and if he has this strong conviction that connection with God is a day-to-day -day thing that changes and transforms and uplifts and encourages and builds up and strengthens, then he knew without a doubt that he could face the lions at any time and know that there would be no harm that would come to him. You see, that's the kind of conviction that brings about great results and manifests in powerful ways. What do you believe? What do you believe? Have you ever taken an inventory of what you believe? It's good to take inventory of things quite often. Quite often to go through, you know, uh, your closets, go through your, sh your, your clothes, go through your shoes. Take, we take inventory of different things. I got this and I got that and I got maybe a little too much. And Oh, that's why you're bringing it to the yard sale. Oh, good. Friday, Saturday, drop those things off for the yard sale. Because you've done a little inventory. You've taken a little chance to look and check through things that you maybe need and don't need. How about an inventory of our beliefs? What beliefs are working for us? What beliefs do we have that we really hold dear? What beliefs are convictions? What beliefs are like, mm, I'm not so sure. You see, that's why it's really important that in this case, that we have sat down to really say, what is it that's really there that I hold dear to my heart? Because why is believing so important? Because you may be in this Daniel scenario someday in your life where you're facing those metaphorical lions, where you're facing those obstacles. And you will be there to s express those beliefs and say, whoa, 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 what, to what level do I really believe this? To what level am I able to manifest this? To what level or degree does this really take shape in my life? Because what you are receiving in life is based on what you really believe. Think about that. What you are receiving in life is based on what you really, really, really believe. So if you believe in a God of abundance, should we not believe then and exercise? I know that all good things are coming my way and all blessing is there for me in all kinds of ways and I live an abundant life. I live an abundant life. And we set forth that mindset and we live each and every day from that perspective. And there's not a day where we walk in lack and fear and stress and worry because it's a conviction. It's a strong held belief and we express it and live it out. Because let me tell you this, what you believe then is being manifested. What you believe is being shaped. And if you want to know what your life, what you really believe, well, look at how your life is shaped. Look at what's manifesting within. Now, those in, in the biblical times gathered outside the walls of Jericho, the children of Israel, believing that this was a formidable force, that they wanted to take the city of Jericho to be theirs. But there was a large wall around this city. And so they felt called to march around this wall, to march around it every single day, to go around and around. And you would think, wait a minute. How crazy is this? Would you walk around those walls? Would you march around them if you didn't believe that there would bring about change, transition, some sort of uh, difference in the world or making a difference? Yeah, I think that there are a lot of things that the children of Israel could have done with their day. I could do other things than just walk around the walls. I could do other things. I could enjoy my life. I could be you know, laying out on the beach, or I could be, uh, you know, reading a good book, or I could be a hot, hot, but instead, I believe that I'm going to march across around these walls of the city with great intention and conviction and belief 
that they're going to make this march. It's going to bring about a change. And so we read within the scriptures that as they marched around on that final day, they shouted out in victory and the wall fell down. You see, as you believe, so you shall receive. So it's the power of your believing and the intensity. Even though believing may seem like you're stepping out on a limb, stepping out, out of the boat, getting out in a place where you're like, is this kind of crazy? Is this kind of ridiculous? It, oh, but if it's based in conviction, there is nothing foolish, ridiculous to be seen because you're demonstrating that which you firmly, firmly know, believe, hold dear. And when you do, you express so beautifully, this is what I believe. How many of you believe that God is not a respecter of persons? Okay, let's see some. Okay, a few more hands are going up. All right, let's see. God is not a respecter of persons. How about saying amen? Okay. How many of you believe that it's God's desire for our highest and best? Say amen. So how many of you believe that it's God's desire for the highest and best? For even our enemies? Say amen. Even for those who oppose us, say amen. Even those who may be aliens or seem to be as different than us or those who may be seen as outcasts, is God always there for them, wanting their best? Oh, yes. Now, if we believe that, then isn't that how we would live, that we would welcome everyone with this heart of grace that says, if I believe that God is not a respecter of persons and God loves me, just the same as God loves you, then how should I treat you? Oh, I already know. I would treat you the way I want to be treated. You see, that's the demonstration of what you believe matching up with the expression of how you act and how you live out in your life. So we see here that there are limiting beliefs also in our lives that maybe we need to think about letting go. Some limiting beliefs. So as we take an inventory, there may be some beliefs that say, you know what, I don't know if I really believe this anymore, or I don't know that this really works for me, or I don't really know that this is of value for me in my life. Because what I want to see are fruits. I want to see the manifestations. So what I believe, I really want to put high energy into it. I want to put that high frequency. I want to make sure that it's truly on the level of a conviction for my life so that there is something bringing forth fruit. It's manifesting within our life. For the fruit is the expression or manifestation of what we believe. And so it's really important that we are there to be people who are living at a high level or intensity, vibrational level of believing and putting it into practice at all times. The Bible is so full of stories for us that speak to us, that teach us. But really there are stories. There's your stories and my stories. We just have to change the names. Let's go to the story of David facing Goliath. We find this beautiful story in 1 Samuel 17, when David says to the Philistines who have been taunting him, and he's coming out with just his slingshot and just some stones in his hand. Now, here's a young boy to be the representative of the children of Israel in this battle, to go up against a big giant, a Goliath in this world. Well, Goliath thinks, well, Israel, wouldn't you want to send your strongest man, not a boy? Really? Okay, so he's taunting David and think, calling him to be this simple child. And David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin. Ah, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down. Woo! I love that conviction. Woo! This day, this day, right here, right now. Mm, it's going to happen in this moment. Now, that's a conviction. And that's a powerful belief expressed. And that's the story of your life and my life when we wake up in the morning and we say, this day, I will strike out obstacles. This day, I will overcome. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will Rejoice and be glad. Uh-huh, exactly. That's what we're looking for. That wonderful belief, that conviction that ex is being expressed the moment before those feet hit the ground and you hit the bed, uh, the floor out of the bed, and you just say, you know what? This is the day. 
this day I will be the one who delivers, uh, the one who overcomes. I will be the one who is the great revelation of the divine. Then David says, I will strike you down that all the assembly may know. Ooh, this is the greatest expression of what I believe. That the Lord saves not with sword and spear, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit. This is how God is at work. Now that's a conviction. When you could say, I can face these Goliath, these giants. I can face these obstacles in my life with such belief, such conviction. That I know that I'm demonstrating it's not going to be by power. It's not going to be this by some sort of might or some physical element, but it's going to be by the spirit of God working in through me, around me and for me. And I know that's exactly how this day is going to manifest. So when we look at our beliefs and we say, well, I'm not sure which beliefs I really hold dear to my heart or really want to practice or really, you know, it's good to do this little inventory because one of the greatest things you can do is be honest about one of the things you believe. Be really honest. That's the beginning. Have some integrity. It's okay to say, I don't believe. Because it's far better in the world for you to say, I don't believe this, than to say, I believe it, but I don't practice it. You know? I believe it, but I don't put it into action. I believe it, but psh, I would never do it. I believe it, you know, uh, but it's not going to work for me. I would rather you, and I believe all the world around us, would say, let's have a little integrity here. Let's just say, you know what? I'm at this place where I don't know if I believe that. And that's a great place to begin, to have the integrity to ask why and to begin to search to say, why don't I believe this? In our world today, we have so much division and racism, so much separation and viewpoints. And yet we are one of these proclaiming to say we are this Christian nation. Wow. You see how the rest of the world looks at us and say, okay, you're a Christian. And what do we know? Oh, they'll know you're Christians by your walls, by your division, by your attacks on one another, by the ways that you withhold, the ways that you do not care or welcome one another in human rights and equality. Wow. Wow. And you proclaim you're the Christian nation. Really? Okay. Gandhi offered that wonderful quote and he said, you know what? I love Christianity and I would be a Christian if it wasn't for Christians. <laughs> and how true it is that we have not expressed truly because when we ask, why don't we express, why don't we live out the things that we say we believe? It's because Jeremiah 12, 2 says it clearly. You have planted them, those beliefs, and they have taken root. They grow and bear fruit. You, you are always on their lips, but far from their hearts. It's saying you may speak it, but it's far from your heart. It's not in you. You don't feel it. You don't identify with it. That's why we don't believe it. We say God is love. Oh, but not for me. You've got to feel that, not just know it. We say God is uh, providing and abundant. You have to feel that and not just say it. It can't be just with lips. It has to be with heart. It has to be intellect expressed, yes, but it has to be intellect felt, a knowing within us. And when it's not there, what happens is we don't believe it from the heart. We have trouble living it out then in our life. The master offered talents, money, to a few. The Bible story tells us of the master giving out talents to one, talents to another, talents to another. The first one, I don't believe that the master really is kind and generous and good. I, I, I'm afraid he's going to punish me, so I'm going to bury my talents. The next two begin to invest at different levels, and blessings happen there. What's the difference, and what's that story, and how does it mean for us, and how is it our story? It's very simply, if you don't believe from your heart that the divine providence of God is at work within you, for you, and through you, you're going to bury whatever you have. You're going to hold on to it. You're going to hoard it. You're going to dig a hole and say, i got to keep it safe. I'm going to not release it and let it go and let it flow and flourish and work through my life. 
But those who have taken this truth as a belief and a conviction within their life say, no, I'm going to take everything that God has invested in me and invest it in others and share and see it multiplied and see it grow and see it manifest in beautiful ways because this is what I believe, not just here, not here, but here. I believe it with all my heart. So if you believed it to be true, it is. And if it's not so, then you must not really believe it. That's the simple message. So it begins to come to us to say, you know, we're going to do some evaluation. If I believe it, the great strength of believing is then to practice it, to test it. Here's what I want to inspire you to do is to say, if this is a place where the greatest expression of what we believe is how we act, how we live, what we say, what we do, our very actions, and then wow, practice it. I invite you today to practice facing your Goliath. Stand up to your Goliath and say, this is the day that I overcome. I want you to practice walking out on water, not in the swimming pool, not on Lake Lanier. I'm talking about walking on the waters of life. Practice stepping out above all the chaotic thoughts of this world that would be waves that would toss and fro to and fro, but to step out, practice it, say, this I believe in. I invite you to get out of the boat like Peter did. I invite you to step out of that ark of safety, that boat that may be there to say, I've been staying in here far too long. I need to test what I believe. I need to practice what I believe. Today, I'm going to get out of my boat. Today, I'm going to walk on some water. Today, I'm going to face my Goliath. Today, I'm going to break loaves and fishes and feed 5,000. What? How am I going to do that? You see, it's practicing what you believe, that I have abundance, I have enough, and what I break, I share, and it's multiplied. And so it is that the needs of the world are met through the generosity of heart and sharing. I invite you to be today those who put into practice and test your faith to pick up your bed and walk. The Bible stories over and over again are speaking to us to say, if you really believe this, then demonstrate it, then express it, then show the world. How about we all pick up our bed and start walking and leave behind our excuses and our lame ideas that say, well, I could, but... No one's there to help me, and it's your fault that I'm lame in the first place. And I'm, you know, you don't realize the, the troubles I've gone through and how difficult it is for my life. But oh no, pick up your bed and walk because you believe and you want to express it and practice it and demonstrate it. And I know you're going to love this one. How about we turn some water into wine? That's right. Actually, do this where we transform that which we believe to be lack and doubt and manifest it instead in ways that now it becomes abundance and blessing. That's that whole story of Jesus turning water into wine is the wonderful metaphor for us to do the same, to say, do you believe? Well, then get out there and practice and demonstrate it. If you believe it, it will happen for you. Now, not literally, but I'm inviting you to understand the metaphorical lesson for our lives and the symbolism of the scripture that invites us to do something phenomenal. That is to say to the world, this is what I believe. Look at the demonstration. Look what I'm showing to you. Look at my actions. Look, not to bring glory for yourself. Oh, no. Because you know that passage of scripture that's foundational to our name, City of Life? It says there will be a city Placed on a hill, a higher consciousness is what it's symbolizing. A higher level of knowing. And a city that's raised up on a hill cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden, no matter what you want to say. It can't because everybody will see that city up on a hill, shining bright. And it will bring glory to God. Not to ourselves, but glory to the God at work within us. The power, the presence, the divine inspiration, intellect at work. You can bring glory to it, the glory to God that is the very source of our being. And that passage in Matthew is foundational to who we are and what we're all about. So I ask you today, how do you act? I invite you to take inventory of your beliefs, to live out the beliefs for others to see in such a way that our vibrational level is felt and experienced by the world around us. 
And as you do to let your light so shine before mankind that they will see your good works and bring glory to God and say, this is a place. Yeah, this is a place for people who know that the greatest expression of what they believe is seen in what they do. Amen.